Hi guys, Brian from Brian Boas here. Have you been bored with your reptiles lately? Have you been into reptile keeping for a while, but it's just not as exciting as it used to be? Well, today I'm gonna to share some tips that you can use to keep reptile keeping fresh and exciting. We'll also look at some beautiful animals like this one, so be sure to stay tuned. So regardless of how long you've been keeping reptiles, you probably noticed this phenomenon that a lot of the people, probably the majority, have just gotten into the hobby. And they're super excited about their latest reptile. They want to show pictures. They want to talk about it, ask questions, etc. And then you have a hand core of like really hardcore people that have been doing it for decades. And it seems like this is usually the case on the forums and other places where reptile people interact. And, you know, so I think there are a lot of reasons for this. People get into reptiles and, you know, when it's new and novel, it's really exciting. But then once the novelty wears off, they just don't want to do it anymore. And this is really unfortunate. The best way to keep reptile keeping fun and exciting is just to enjoy it in different ways. There's so many different things you can do with reptile keeping other than just getting new reptiles. And so, what I want to caution people about, a lot of people think, well, I'm bored with reptile keeping. I'll just go out and get another reptile. This is really not the answer. So if you're bored with reptile keeping, do not go out and buy another reptile to make it more exciting. This might be exciting for, you know, maybe a few weeks to a month or so, but ultimately the novelty of that new reptile is going to wear off. You're going to be back in the same position where you started. You know, you have a bunch of reptiles, now you have even more reptiles to care for, and you've dug yourself in a little deeper. So we wanna really figure out ways that you can genuinely enjoy the hobby. And so I've seen a lot of people over the years that get into reptiles, they go big, and then they go bust. So, you know, the first year or so, they're getting a new reptile sometimes every few weeks in some cases. And before you know it, they got a room full of reptiles. And for a while, they're really loving it. They're really enjoying it. They're getting their latest reptile. It's almost like a heroin junkie getting a fix in a way. Um, but they're always super happy with that new reptile. But then, you know, a year, two years, three years down the road, you just it's not as exciting. And these reptiles are really becoming a burden. They got a whole room full. They're spending hundreds of dollars a month feeding these things and lots and lots of time. And now they can't do other things that they used to enjoy doing. And maybe their friends are giving them weird looks and maybe it's putting a distance in their relationships with their loved ones. So it's become a bit of a burden. And so these people also, they can't get any more reptiles because they've basically reached the end of their bandwidth. There's only a certain amount of space, time, and or money that people have to put into reptiles. And you can't just go on building, you know, a collection forever. And these people, a lot of them are really collectors rather than, you know, reptile keepers. Maybe they'd be better off collecting coins or stamps or baseball cards or something like that that just doesn't take the same amount of maintenance. So again, I would strongly recommend you don't buy a reptile to you know increase your interest in the hobby because it can only go so far it's really about enjoying the reptiles that you have you know not having the reptiles you've always wanted because everybody wants another reptile and there's always that other snake or tortoise or lizard and you're just going to be in the same boat eventually if you do get those extra reptiles my first piece of advice you may want to consider if you're getting bored with your reptiles is to connect with some other reptile keepers face to face. So these days, almost all the interactions for a lot of people are done online, you know, in forums or Facebook or watching YouTube videos like this. And while this is certainly a, a, a great way to get a lot of advice and information, it's somewhat limited. You're only going to get a certain type of information online and you're not really going to have that same connection face to face that you would in person. So I would recommend you reach out and join some kind of an organization, some kind of a reptile club, you know, um, or a group dedicated to keeping reptiles. And there are quite a few reptile societies out there. I think reptile societies were probably more popular before the days of the internet, but there are still quite a few. And these range from general all-purpose reptile societies that deal with lots of different types of animals to specialty groups like people that keep tortoises or you know pythons or you know some kind of more specialized reptile. So seek it out if you live in a area with a city there's likely to be more than one possibly that you can join. But these are great to go to just to meet people, talk to people face to face. They usually have regular meetings, sometimes once a month, and they'll typically have a presenter give a presentation on a specific topic. Um, 
I know that since the pandemic happened that a lot of in-person events have been canceled, but hopefully now that the pandemic finally seems to be waning, we might get back to some resemblance of a normality and we might have these types of face-to-face -face interactions. You may also want to uh, think about presenting at one of these meetings if you have an expertise in a certain area. Most of these clubs are always thrilled to have people volunteer to present so that they can keep a regular lineup of speakers for their monthly meeting. So consider doing that. You can meet a lot of people, get people interested in your specific type of reptile you work with. It can be just a win-win situation. A related thing to think about is speaking to a youth group about reptiles. And this can be anywhere from a school to a Cub Scout or Girl Scout uh, group, you know, to a birthday party, for example. Um, I, my son used to be in Cub Scouts and I would take my boas over there, show the kids. To be honest, I'm really not a big kid person, but it was great to show the kids my reptiles and they were really super excited and it kind of brought me back to, you know, being a 10 year old again and you know how much I liked reptiles at that age. It's also really good to, for the community to give a positive light about reptiles and, you know, teach them about why reptiles are important and why they're super interesting. And this is really what we need to do to keep the hobby alive for the next few generations. There are even people that go to birthday parties and they even make a side gig out of it and make a little bit of money. Just doing birthday party shows, bringing their animals, showing the kids. Most kids really love it. Um, and it's you know fulfilling for the uh, presenter as well because they get to make a little bit of money and they get the enjoyment of spreading their knowledge and love of reptiles with the next generation. So definitely think about connecting with people if you're starting to get a little bit bored with your reptile hobby. The next thing to consider if you're getting bored with your reptile hobby is to find a new source of information and that is to read. And I know a lot of people when they're thinking about reptiles they go right online. They go to the internet, the forums, the YouTube videos, the Facebook groups and they get their information there. And while that's certainly valuable, it's a very one-sided source of information. And a lot of it is wrong and there's you know a lot of social issues as well which I've you know covered in previous videos. So what I would recommend is that you read reptile books. Okay and there are thousands of books out there that are worthy of your time and they will definitely stimulate your interest in reptiles. I actually did a video previously on my top 10 reptile books so check that one out. Uh, but I just wanted to say that these books go back this book is over 100 years old by Raymond Dittmars. This is another great book by Carl Caulfield that's about 50 years old. You know, two of my top favorite reptile books. Um, and then there are more modern books. Most of you guys probably have this one by Vin Russo, a must read. Uh, I recommend this Giant Snakes by uh, John Murphy and Tom Crutchfeld, another great book that just came out in the last few years. And then as far as the best, still the best book on breeding boas and pythons is the reproductive husbandry of pythons and boas. It's now about 30 years old but still well worth reading and you can find a used copy on Amazon. So check these books out and you know as I mentioned thousands of other ones um, you know to stimulate your interest in reptiles. If you have a book I haven't heard of please write it in the comments below what's your favorite reptile related book so that the rest of us can check it out. And then related to books are reptile magazines. And for a while, from about 1993 to around 2000, I subscribed to Reptiles Magazine. Uh, I'm not even sure if they still produce this. I think they don't publish it nearly as much as they used to. In fact, I had all of the issues from the first issue in 1993 up until around 2000. And, you know, like an idiot, I threw away most of them a few years ago to save up, save space. I did keep some of my favorite issues. Probably my favorite issue is this 1996, November 1996 issue. It's a special boa constrictor issue. This is an absolute classic. This is probably the first time I saw a lot of the locality boas. There's this great article by Dick Bartlett, who is just an amazing reptile author. Um, I'm sure you're probably familiar with Dick Bartlett, but he wrote this awesome article on boas and uh, beautiful pictures. I mean, you can see these pictures of what these Peruvian boas. I had never seen boas like this. Here's an Argentine boa. Um, it was just a great article. And then interestingly, the centerpiece is this albino, call albino boa, which these animals had just recently become available and they were still in the many thousands of dollar range. But this is before, you know, the morphs became really commonplace. Um, but just, you know, 
some more beautiful animals. Some of these animals are similar to what we have. I haven't seen some of these animals like this Mexican boa. Um, I'm sure there's still some of them out there in, you know, in reptile husbandry. But another thing I like about looking at these old magazines, it's like a trip down memory lane. It really brings me back to my early 20s. Just looking at the ads, looking at things that people were selling. Here's an, art, here's an ad for CD-ROMs. Does anybody even remember CDs? Um, there's this interesting, I found this ad. This is from Brian Barsick back in 1996, before of course he had the YouTube channel, but his uh, reptile breeding business right here. And just, you know, classified ads. I mean, we don't have classified ads anymore, but there's page after page of breeders and rodent suppliers and cage suppliers. Just really brings you back. And I think some of you younger guys don't even remember this concept of classified ads since we have so many online resources these days. But just, you know, great to get a uh, stroll down memory lane looking at these old reptile magazines. If you don't have reptile magazines, you can probably buy uh, used copies, you know, really old issues if you want to have the same type of experience. So just a cool thing to see how people were keeping reptiles a few decades ago. My next piece of advice to consider if you're getting bored of your reptiles is to get it, go to a zoo where you can see reptiles being displayed. And I always find when I get go to a really nice zoo with really nice, well set up reptile displays, it gives me a new vigor and appreciation of my own reptiles. And so this can be anywhere from a general zoo that keeps lots of different animals to a specialty reptile zoo that specializes just in reptiles. And so there are many, many really excellent zoos out there, uh, probably not that far from you. You know, two of the top zoos I've been to that come to mind are the Bronx Zoo and the San Diego Zoo, which both have amazing reptile displays. They're really well set up and it's just a pleasure. I could spend the entire trip just in the reptile house, just looking at all the amazing animals and the beautiful setups. There's also specialty zoos that specialize just in reptiles. There's, for example, in the Southeast has a lot of these, like Alligator Adventure in South Carolina. There's a lot of alligator farms in you know, the Florida area. The, just, there's a whole lot to see. There's even a rattlesnake museum in Albuquerque, New Mexico that I remember going to a few times that specializes just in rattlesnakes and information about them as well as keeping them in captivity on display. I'm, hopefully that zoo is still in existence. Um, but so many great reptile zoos out there. Please comment below if you have a favorite reptile or zoo that you love to visit. Please write it in the comments so the rest of us can check it out. But going to a zoo will always give you more enthusiasm for your own reptiles. The next piece of advice I have to bring new interest to reptiles if things are getting boring is to photograph them. And this is one of my main outlets with reptiles. I just love taking pictures of them and I used to be into or I still am into lots of other types of photography but I always love taking pictures of my snakes. And so I know you can take pictures with a cell phone and it's sometimes convenient, but there's a lot more control you can get by using a camera that's not from a cell phone. A camera that you can change the lenses, that you can set the f-stop, you can set the shutter speed, control the exposure. You just have so much more creative options and so much more control. And there are thousands and thousands of digital SLRs and mirrorless digital cameras out there. It doesn't have to be the latest and greatest, can be 10 years old it still works perfectly fine in fact I'm shooting this video right now on a SLR from that I got in 2008 that actually came out the year before and it still works great so get a camera learn how to use it study photography theory okay I know the cell phone cameras are all fully automatic but you're really missing out on what photography is really about if you don't understand exposure theory f-stop shutter speed ISO film setting etc so Get that camera and start taking pictures of your snakes. Look at other people's photography, both in books and online. Here's some photos that I've recently taken of my snakes. I also regularly post some of these photos that I've made of my own snakes in the community section of the Brian Boas YouTube page. So be sure to check that out for regular updates and some of my latest photos of my snakes. 
So if you're not really into photography, there's other artistic mediums that you can use as a creative outlet. You can draw your snakes. You can do watercolor paintings of them. I've seen people making these beautiful lifelike clay sculptures of their snakes. There's just all kinds of different media you can work with as a creative outlet with your snakes. In fact, I've even seen people that use snake skins to make arts and crafts. And, you know, I certainly have these snake skins coming up to my ears. Um, I haven't really made any arts and crafts with them, but you know, if that's your cup of tea, go for it. You know, whatever pickles your pickle or floats your boat, make crafts with your snake skins. Whatever you need to do to keep it fresh and exciting. The next piece of advice you may want to consider if your reptile keeping is getting a little stale is to build some enclosures for your reptiles. And I've gone, I've done quite a few videos on some of my own building projects like these uh, boa tub racks behind me. If you want to check out those videos, there's a link right above. But it's not that hard to build like really nice, high quality enclosures for your reptiles, even if you don't have a lot of uh, carpentry skills. I have very rudimentary carpentry skills. I have a drill, a cordless screwdriver, and a few saws, and that's all that I need. So if you want to build racks, for example, it's really easy to build custom racks around whatever tub size you want using the, the uh, techniques that I described in my video on these uh, bow racks. Basically, you're just making a framework and then you're putting the sides up and then you're kind of screwing in the uh, shelves for the racks. And it's really simple. These are like really high quality. These things will last forever. They're really well built. Much better built and I'm much happier with these than the commercially available vision racks that hold the same size of tub. So in addition to getting a better quality project product and having a lot more versatility on the design, you can also sometimes get the rack or a homemade cage done a lot faster. A lot of the reptile cage manufacturers right now, they're booked out months and months in advance. You might order now, you might not get your cage until 2023 or even 2024, it's that far out. So do yourself a favor, just take the time, design yourself a reptile cage, get your tools out and get building and you'll probably be really happy with the results as well as you'll probably save a lot of money. The next piece of advice I have for you if you're getting bored with your reptiles is to design and build a naturalistic vivarium to keep your boa in. So whether you want to recreate a slice of the Peruvian rainforest for your true red tail or just recreate the high desert scrub of northern Mexico for your Tarahumara mountain dwarf boa, there's a vivarium out there that you can build. Building a vivarium is a pretty specialized process. It's quite involved from choosing the right plants to the right lights to water features like drip systems or waterfalls to just recreating as much as possible what the environment looks like. And if you go to zoos, I'm sure you notice that zoos almost always will keep their reptiles in naturalistic vivaria. Like people really like to see the animal and its natural habitat just really enhances the experience. So having a naturalistic vivarium can really enhance your enjoyment of your reptiles. And it can be something that you can show off to people, non-reptile keepers, to come to your house as a conversation starter. So incidentally, it's not necessarily necessary for your boa's health or well-being to have a naturalistic vivarium. And boas can do fine in you know, more traditional uh, captive setups, provided they have the right heat, humidity, and uh, cover, you know, hiding places, things like that. But having the naturalistic vivarium can certainly enhance your own appreciation of your reptiles. One final piece of advice, if you're looking for a way to keep reptile keeping exciting, is to do some field herping. Go out in the field, in the outdoors, and look for reptiles in the wild. And this can be anywhere from a casual stroll through your neighborhood park to a three-week expedition in the Peruvian Amazon and everything in between. So it's always nice to go out there to try to find reptiles. You may not find the snake you're looking for, but maybe you find a turtle you've never seen, or maybe you see a bird or some kind of interesting plant. There's just so much out there to discover in nature, and it's really refreshing for your mind if you need to unwind from the stresses of everyday life. 
be sure to bring your camera with you to document your findings. At the very least, a cell phone camera, if not your own dedicated mirrorless or digital SLR. And you can even upload what you photograph onto sites like iNaturalist, where you can put the coordinates, the GPS coordinates for the species you saw, as well as keep a list of species that you've encountered in the wild. Makes it kind of a fun and exciting game. In my own hikes in the environment looking for reptiles, what it's kind of showed me is just how rare certain reptiles are in the environment. You might never see a certain species, but then you might, when you're least expecting it, come across a species that you weren't even looking for. So it's a really cool way to just tell what's out there as far as reptiles and really give a different perspective um, on you know what we get as reptile keepers. I mean, we're really spoiled by the uh, diversity of different boas available. In my own collection, I've got many beautiful animals representative of millions of square miles of habitat from northern Mexico down to Argentina. But if you went out in the field, say in the Amazon rainforest, you might look for a whole week and not encounter a single red tail boa. Or you might be lucky and encounter three on the first day. You just never know. But the point is, is that reptiles in the wild are unfortunately not nearly as common as they are in many collections. So that was some suggestions in case reptile keeping has gotten kind of stale. Hopefully if you try some of these things, it'll mix it up a bit, keep things exciting. As always, I'd love to hear your questions and suggestions in the comments below. Thanks for watching and enjoy your boas.